Welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer channel, where you may be wasting time, but you'll probably learn something about your constitutional rights. If you believe that's time well wasted, please subscribe and follow along with the madness. A West Virginia deputy has been indicted by the feds. It just hit the news a few days ago. I figured there must be some body cam footage of this incident, so I went ahead and sent a FOIA request to the employer agency. I was holding off on discussing this case until I saw the footage. I've now received a response from the Sheriff's Department, and you're not going to like it. I know I didn't. Here's what we know as of right now. Monongalia County, that's Morgantown, Sheriff's Office Deputy Lance Kareza has been indicted in federal court for a felony civil rights violation after allegedly punching and pepper spraying a handcuffed suspect, as well as for attempting to cover it up by filing a false police report. The DOJ issued a press release. I went ahead and pulled the unsealed indictment off PACER. Unfortunately, it doesn't contain much in the way of details. I rightfully assume that there must be body cam footage. That has now been confirmed by the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of West Virginia, who gave a media interview explaining that there was indeed body cam footage of this incident, and that it was key to their decision to indict the defendant officer. He gave some additional details that weren't in the indictment. Here's what he said. Once we saw the evidence and interviewed the witnesses, we knew that this case had to be charged. He also noted that the Monongalia County Prosecutor's Office decided not to pursue state charges. That's not. So that means that the body cam footage must be good, or rather bad. In fact, he said, the video really speaks for itself. There's a lot of it, and that's why body cams are so important. And if that's the case, why did the state-level county prosecutor not file charges? That's a rhetorical question, of course. As you'll see, the county is now attempting to stop me from sharing this body cam footage with the public. You. They can give it to the feds, of course, but not the citizens that they represent. As soon as I heard about the initial indictment, and I saw this DOJ press release, I went ahead right away and sent a FOIA request to the Sheriff's Department. As of this morning, they responded, denying my request on the grounds that there's a federal prosecution taking place. The problem is, however, I didn't FOIA the feds, but rather the county, who has decided not to prosecute. So there's an exception in our state FOIA statute where there's, if there's still an open criminal investigation, they don't have to give you what you're asking for. But they don't have an open state-level criminal investigation. What's happening here is that the county, Monongalia, Monongalia County Sheriff's Office, is attempting to prevent the public from seeing this body cam footage even though the U.S. attorney prosecuting the federal indictment just released is discussing it on the radio in the past few days. Here's more of what the U.S. attorney said. Deputy Kareza and six others responded to a disturbance at the residence in January 20th, 2018. An investigation at the scene determined none of the suspects broke laws or would be arrested, but management asked that they be escorted from the property. As the group exited the floor, Kareza ordered one of the guests to open the door to a nearby room where he found a man sleeping. Kareza then allegedly began to shake the man and hit his feet to wake him up. When the guest explained he was sleeping, Kareza threw him off the bed and beat him. As the contact escalated, Kareza restrained the guest as the six other officers were in the room. So if you've watched some of my recent videos, you've heard about the, you know, the fact that the Constitution still applies to you if you're a tenant of a hotel room. But that's not even what this federal indictment is about. Just an aside. Continuing with what the federal prosecutor said, he said this particular victim had a flashlight in his face and he thought it was just his friends messing around with him. It turned out that it was a sheriff's deputy. And from there, it really got out of control. Kareza battered and used pepper spray on the victim while handcuffed. While the suspect was being taken off the property, Kareza then allegedly continued to use unnecessary force. The report that was filed after this did not indicate that pepper spray had been deployed after handcuffs were used. In fact, it said pepper spray was deployed before handcuffs were used, which was not consistent with the video evidence we have. Again, that's from the federal prosecutor. He's referencing the body cam footage, which should have been provided to me so that we could see it, so that the public could see it. So I already responded to their denial of my FOIA request, and I'm threatening to sue them for illegally denying my request. The public has a right to see this footage. The sheriff's office can't just suppress footage that's owned by the public. It's public record. I will get that footage, and now I really want to see it. 
So I also pulled the actual indictment itself off of Pacer, and I'll post it up on the blog if you want to see it. Here's what it charges. The indictment contains two counts. The first is deprivation of rights under color of law. This alleges that Lance Kareza, a deputy sheriff with the Monongalia County Sheriff's Office, while acting under color of law, deprived the victim of his Fourth Amendment rights by engaging in an unreasonable, i.e. excessive, unnecessary and unjustified use of force. Specifically, he punched the victim in the face, striking him, spraying him with pepper spray at a time after the victim had been handcuffed. It's also alleged that he kneed the victim while escorting him. The indictment specifically alleges that this offense included the use of a dangerous weapon and resulted in bodily injury to the victim. Why was that last part alleged? As we've discussed before in these glorious cases where those elements are present, the charge of deprivation under color of law transforms from a misdemeanor up to a felony level. Count two of the indictment alleges that on the following day, so January 21st, 2018, Deputy Kareta knowingly falsified and made a false entry in a record in document with the intent to impede, obstruct, and influence an investigation into his action. Specifically, it alleges that Kareta made false entries into a use of force report by falsely stating that he sprayed the victim with pepper spray before the victim was handcuffed, as well as by omitting that he sprayed the victim with pepper spray after the victim was handcuffed, and also omitting that he struck the victim after he was handcuffed. If convicted, Kareza faces up to 10 years in prison for the civil rights violation and up to 20 years in prison for falsifying the report. As they say, a lot of times the cover-up is worse than the original crime. So there's quite a bit of case law out there placing police officers on notice that it's unreasonable excessive force to use tasers or pepper spray on handcuffed arrestees. The Fourth Amendment bars police officers from using excessive force to effectuate a seizure. Courts evaluate a claim of excessive force based on an objective reasonableness standard, taking into account the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. These are known as the Graham factor. The courts also look at the circumstances of the at the moment that force was deployed, with an eye towards the proportionality of the force in light of all the circumstances involved. So there's already binding legal precedent in the Fourth Circuit, which is where West Virginia is located, that pepper spraying suspects in response to minimal nonviolent resistance is a Fourth Amendment violation. You can look at the 2001 case of Park versus Shiflet. There's quite a bit of case law denying correctional officers qualified immunity for using pepper spray unnecessarily for the purpose of causing pain or for retaliation, as well as for using it excessively. So there's a big difference between pepper spraying an arrestee who was handcuffed and one who was not handcuffed. There's also a difference between the use of pepper spray in a jail or prison context and use against a non-incarcerated individual. Because there, it's much more likely to be considered excessive force by the courts, especially if one is handcuffed. So unfortunately, I can't show you the body cam footage, but we now have confirmation that it exists. I may have to sue for it, but I'll get it one way or the other. I'll post the documents I have so far up on the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. I look forward to following this one, and I look forward to seeing what happens. As always, thanks for watching. You'll find more information in the link below to the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you have a video you want me to see, please use the submission link in the description or at the blog. If you want to learn more about these cases and your constitutional rights, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss updates or future videos. Please also comment with your thoughts about this case. Do you agree or disagree with the feds prosecuting here? What about the state refusing to prosecute? If you want to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button, becoming a channel member or sponsor. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. See you next time.